active. All right, guys, Blake here. And today we're going to be taking another run into the Abyssal. I'm using the same gear, the same fit. Mainly, I just want to show you some different rooms you might encounter, the problems they can cause, and just to prove that it will consistently run the sites rather than me just say, yeah, it's great, crack on. If you want to go and see the fit in full detail, you can have a look at my last video. I'll link it somewhere, but I'll just skim over it now. So basically what you've got is three medium core defense field twos. We're using rapid lights, sketch fury, and the faction variant, just depending on what we're fighting. Right, we've got the medium NOS. It doesn't do a great deal, but it will provide enough power, if you're completely new to doubt, to run the adaptive and vulnerable in vulnerability fields. Um, biggest threat to this ship is being muted out basically so that can really save your life. Uh, we've got three Republic Shield Extenders, a compact afterburner, and three DDAs. Now we're going to be using obviously Faction and T2 Vespers, obviously just playing into the kinetic hole of the site. The Vespers are going to be for your fast stuff, so when you come into just frigate rooms and things. The T2 variants you use for battleships and that kind of thing, you get a little bit of extra DPS from the T2s. But that's it, we will jump into the site and we'll see what we find. guys so this isn't just going to be one run through all i'm going to do is i'm going to cut together different rooms just to try and give you an idea of the different things you're going to come across and how i choose to deal with them whenever i go into a room the first thing i want to do is just burn towards the gate i want to deploy my mtu and then i can concentrate on obviously taking enemies out and the loot boxes this can change depending on what's in there some targets are priorities some some rooms you don't need to worry about now this is a this is a great first room to be fair the lucid deep watches the only thing you've got to be concerned about is they can take a little bit of time to kill and keep moving constantly so you want to keep transversal speed up but other than that you can just focus on the loot on the loot drops at this point your drones are going to take them out no bother as you can see they're a little bit tanky but we'll still we'll still clear the room in a couple of minutes so it's no big deal Now this is a really nice little drop here, the blueprints when you look at it, if you look at how much it costs to build one, 33,000 and according to this to sell them for 2.9 mil. Now I think I sold them for 2 mil a piece, um, you can make 5 from a single blueprint so it's not mega money but it's, it's decent for a single drop. Okay guys, so in this room we've got an assortment of sleeper cruisers. Now, again, depending on your fit, your target priority is going to be different. For this fit, there's nothing in this room now that's particularly threatening. I'll go through what they all do briefly, just so again, you can make your own decision when it comes to it. So, the spearfish is going to warp scramble you. Won't matter at all unless you've got a NWD fit, in which case it will shut it down. If you sort of dissipate it, these can be something to worry about. These are going to need you out, basically. Um, certainly with this fit, if you've got no cap, you're dead. You've also got entanglers. Now, they're just going to web you, which, again, if you're relying on sort of speed to improve your tank, going to be a problem. Spotlighters would target paint you. And confusers are going to sense a damp in you. Now, these all only have a range of about 20k. So if need be, you can try and you can try and keep some distance from them. It doesn't again in this fit it doesn't matter. I'm gonna fly straight through the middle of them. I'm not worried, but again, depending on your fit, it's worth knowing. And um, the other ship, Tyrannus. This is another cruiser. It's gonna spawn damaged, so that makes it a lot easier to kill. This variant is the null warp. That's gonna scramble you. And again. For this fit doesn't matter, but if you're relying on an MWD, well, you know, you might want to prioritize that. Now, all those red flares are like you keep seeing, these are coming from something called Deviant Automatic Suppressors. What they're doing is just, just think of them as little mini guns basically. What they're going to do is they're going to damage frigates and drones 
Now, in the Gala particularly, they don't do a great deal of damage to your drones, but they will hurt the enemy frigates. So that can be quite useful, particularly in room with a lot of frigates. The biggest problem with them is they can actually damage and destroy your missiles. So what will happen is if you're firing across them, it's effectively going to reduce reduce your missile range because they'll just get taken out at some point depending on how long they spend in the field. If they come in two variants, there's the medium and the short range. So obviously the biggest thing is um, you have to be a lot closer to activate the short, but the short does do more damage as well, so it's just something to keep an eye on. So as you can see, another nice loot drop, it's just over 11 mil. It only costs, what, the, film, the cost of the filament, so about 3 mil or something to get in. Plenty of people say just run for the bioadaptive cache and leave all the extract extraction subnodes alone. I couldn't disagree more, I've lost count of the amount of times that I've found more ISK from the extraction nodes than I have from the actual main cache. Now obviously if you're short of time, grab, just grab the cache because if you're going to get one of the lucky lottery loot drops then that's where you'll find it. But if you've got the time, I strongly recommend just, just collecting them as well. Um, it's exactly why I use the pack rat, drop it straight down and then even though there's 70, 60, 70 k away a lot of the time it'll pull them in. Uh, I do recommend the pack rat over the standard just because of how quick it pulls them in compared to uh, the standard one and obviously you are under the clock so anything you can do to speed that up is a bonus. Now I'm always happy when I see rooms like this just filled with frigates because for this gila they're very very easy. You do have the option again of using the suppressors you could just try, you could head towards one of them and get them to follow you, but they go down so quickly, I just don't think it's worth the bother, to be honest. Best way to try and do it is get one drone to target an individual frigate, that way you're not wasting any DPS. Um, your missiles have quite an impact on them as well, so all I'm doing when I see a room like this, to be honest, is figuring out where the loot, um, the loot drops are and just trying to gather them up as quickly as I can. And so the reason I've been running so many of these T3s is basically because I want to move up to T4s and T5s in the very near future. Um, for them I'm going to be running electrical and I'm going to be using a new fit. Now it's obviously going to be an awful lot more expensive. The good thing about it is I can build most of it so it works, run T4, so hopefully we're making some more money. And then as obviously bring the extra money in, I can finish upgrading it for the T5. It's going to involve implants, that kind of thing as well, so probably my next video will be showing the new fit and running the first T4. Assuming that goes well, then obviously we'll run a few of them and then we can progress to the T5s. So if you are interested in seeing that, by the way, then please do subscribe, just so you don't miss it. This room's been cleared up again without any problem at all, we'll just have to have a look what the loot drops like now. And it's quite disappointing, nearly 6 mil. But again, it all adds up when you're running through them, you can run them quite quickly. Every so often you're going to get that drop that's worth two, 300 mil, so you just keep plugging away at it. I think it's far better than Ratten. Worth a lot more money, and I think you know, it's more entertaining as well. Once you're in there, you don't have to worry about other people interfering. You've got a rough idea what sort of baseline money is you're going to make, so you're not jumping around 10 belts doing doing nothing. If you do enjoy ratting, if you have a look at my video, Biggest Cheap Ships, it shows you a very nice way of making some really good money doing that. So I'll link that there as well, so that's something else you can have a look at. But that's it for today, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. So thanks very much. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And... Hopefully next time we'll be running a T4 electrical. Take care.